Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to show you how to produce a scale and georeference photogrammetric model using a relatively cheap setup without unmanned aerial vehicles, also known as drones, nor an expensive survey instrument such as a total station or a GNSS RTK. Now, just consider that this method does not replace these instruments. If you are looking for a more reliable method and higher quality, this video is not for you. Or it might be, as long as you are aware that this technique is mostly aimed at producing a simple 3D model. This model can be used to produce a relatively accurate topographic map and perhaps for preliminary analysis. This video will try to show you the fundamentals of photogrammetry or stroke from motion or multi-view stereo applied to a building from the outside. I'm going to map a church and use markers to set up a scale for our model. I will also show you how to use some reference points and our model that are visible in Google Earth, so we can reference it to use it on a GIS program. Without further ado, I will start by showing you the gear that you can use. The first thing I want to show you is the, the boom pole. The boom pole is different from a monopod because most of the weight is close to you because it was designed uh, for microphones so you can be far away from the subject that you are recording uh, but basically you can attach every single equipment uh, that can fit to this thread in this case the thread is uh, 3 8 so in this case I attach my tripod mount which is this one and it can fit easily here this one uh, is reinforced because um, I noticed that it, it wasn't very uh, strong and I, I didn't want my camera to fail from, from, from this attachment. Um, and I added this string like this. So um, a boom pole has a, a hole in the bottom so you can put the cable to attach to the microphone but in this case I use it to put this string so I can use this hook to help me with the pouch that I will show you uh, later. So in, if you don't have a, a boom pole you can also use a tripod and as you can see this, this tripod has also a monopod attached so look at the difference so in this case you have the foot here but it's very thin so if you want to hold your camera like this it will create a stabilization problem so that's the reason you want the boom pull uh, so you can hold it more or less like this but here you, you cannot attach a, any kind of equipment uh, but if you have a, a monopod it's also doable Unfortunately, most monopods are very short as this one. This is the size of this one. Uh, instead, you can use your whole tripod if you have one. So you can hold it like this, obviously with the legs uh, released, like this. And you can use it as a boom pole. I have used this, uh, this tripod as, as such. Um, but in the long run, it's, uh, it's tiring. And that's the reason I use the, this pouch. This pouch is uh, very handy because you can just use this strap to put it in your shoulder and it will help you to, uh, to ease the, the fatigue. Uh, the other piece of equipment that you would use um, is a mini tripod, a flexible mini tripod. And the reason I use the flexible mini tripod is because you can use it as an attachment to your uh, boom pole or tripod, like that. And then you can put your, your cell phone here or your remote controller. So in this occasion, in, your, in the field, I will use this one, which is a, a little bit more uh, sturdy. And in order to use my cell phone, I use this uh, cell phone holder. So it's really straightforward to, to use. 
So in this case, the thread is uh, one fourth. So you just attach your uh, cell phone holder and then you can just put your cell phone and then you can just use this one like that and then you will have like a rubber in your uh, monopod you will see it on the field in this case i am using this camera it's a uh, thir four thirds uh, it has an interchangeable interchangeable lens so you can use any kind of lens but i use this one which is 15 to 45 uh, millimeters so it's kind of a wide angle and it's very handy uh, to cover more area it's not a knifeish lens but it's wide enough to cover uh, a big area uh, but you can use also 360 cameras such as this one this is not the best model to, to produce a photogrammetric model because the the camera is not very good so you will have some uh, stitching problems with both uh, images but you can use these cameras to produce also a photogrammetric model or you can use um, an action camera and for an action camera you need this kind of mount and uh, this is uh, designed for for instance a GoPro so but the, the mechanism is the same so if you use for instance this uh, plate to put your camera as you can see it's a standard uh, one fourth thread and in my case I am using this kind of mount which is an uh, Arca Swiss quick release uh, system and basically you just have to slide uh, the plate on the mount lock it and then you can use the the ball the ball head to put it as you wish and if you don't want to use um, a flexible tripod you can also use a magic arm to put uh, your your cell phone as a remote controller or as a rubber uh, but if you use a magic arm you also need a clamp to hold it uh, to the to the tripod or boom pole so just like this like that and then finally you can use your um, phone holder so the mechanism is it works the same way as the flexible tripod but uh, this could be more sturdy the only problem is that as you can see it's, it's bulkier and then you have your remote controller attached to your uh, monopod or tripod or boom pole and finally on the field you need a meter a measuring tape because uh, this way you can measure distances between the markers in this case we're going to use uh, these kind of markers which are designed to be detected uh, automatically by the program that makes the photogrammetic uh, corrections uh, each marker is different as you can see and each marker has a number the number can be detected automatically uh, but not this one this is just for you but uh, this shape is uh, for the program it's it's coded and in this case i think is 16 bit uh, the coded the coding so um, we have several ones and actually you can print them automatically from agisoft metashape which is the program that we're going to use to process our photos um, this, these are good because are relatively big so they can be uh, detected not only by the program but uh, you can spot them easily on your photographs uh, but you can use anything that you can um, spot on your photographs from far away such as these caps this is a jar cap uh, this is another kind of cap uh, in archaeology we use uh, these ones because um, you can put it on the ground so it's a nail and it's a staple so you can just use it like that 
and then later on in the program you can spot the nail, the, the head of the nail to as a reference marker. But what about big areas? So you can use these kind of things, which this is just um, a cover of, um, of a bowl. Uh, but as my, my friend uh, Moises Hernandez Cordero told me, you can also use frisbees. Or you can even uh, print these ones in a larger scale and you can use them uh, for drone photography, for instance. If you combine this with a total station or a um, GNSS uh, RTK system, well, your, your markers are going to be well positioned and you will develop a more accurate and precise model. Everything is set up and before we start taking photographs we need to take the, the ground control points. So I'm going to set up four uh, ground control points so we can have measurements uh, afterwards with the program. Uh, every single camera is different so I cannot stop telling you how to uh, link your camera with the cell phone. So in this case just set up your uh, own camera to your cell phone so you can start taking photographs from uh, wireless if you want if you cannot take a wireless photograph you can use a cable as well but personally i prefer uh, wireless because uh, since we are using a boom pole uh, we would need a cable of three meters so everything is set up you can see that in my cell phone i can see what is in the camera so you can see me um, and this is very important because uh, it will help you to hold the camera and it will reduce the fatigue uh, right now I'm just going to start putting the ground control points and then we can start taking the photographs and I will let you know how to, to do that you can use this kind of targets to set up your ground control points but uh, you can use any single thing that you can uh, consider a target. The reason I'm using this is because they are visible from far, relatively far away. Um, and they are marked with numbers. So the numbers are really small, so they won't appear in the photograph. But um, the target itself, it's, um, it's binary. So the program will detect the target and it will give the number that is written uh, below. So to have these targets in, uh, in such a place that you can have measurements, you need to set up the targets um, and then you, you have to be able to measure the distance from one target to another. So in my case, my meter is five meters only. So I cannot take uh, the targets more than five meters away. So I will take these targets uh, consecutively uh, separated for about four meters and it's a known distance so I need to measure that distance and I need to grind that down uh, so we can work later on with the program so I'm gonna start putting the targets on the ground that's the reason I put a nail uh, and this way uh, the nail it's uh, small enough so it will not interfere with the with the target We set up uh, four uh, ground control points. Uh, so now I'm going to measure the distance from one point to another. And it's very important that you have uh, a record of this. So you possibly need either your cell phone or a notebook to, to write these uh, numbers down. start taking the points uh, from this point uh, which is one of the corners of this uh, backyard and as you can see I haven't used the, the boom pole as such 
So I'm gonna take two photographs for each location. But I'm gonna start first with this position around the church, and then I'm gonna raise the boom pull, and then I'm gonna take uh, another round uh, of, of photographs. After that, so we will see with the second round uh, the, the targets, but uh, afterwards I, I will take another round so we can have kind of close-ups so we will get a, a different perspective of, of the walls and some details and also the, the targets. It's very important that each target appears at least in two photographs so you can have the, the pairing to, to create the kind of the stereo pair. Uh, so we will, we will start. Now, uh, since it's very important to have uh, a stereoscopic depiction of the church for each two photo for each pair of photographs we need to move around the, the church uh, parallelly to the walls of the church so instead of, of doing this so let's suppose that I start here instead of doing one photo and then I want to take the rest of the of the church I need to move parallelly to the wall so one photo here one fo photo here Then move one photo parallelly and another one like this and another one like this. So you have three photos per location. Or even more than three photos, you can move. So but the main the, the most important part is that each location has start taking the photos. For these kind of, of obstacles, you can also use the boom pole. So I need to take a photograph from this position, but uh, if I go closer to the church, it will be uh, a very close photograph and I need now to capture the whole church. So my best point of view is this one. So I just need to, uh, to raise my camera and with the boom pole it's really, really straightforward. So you can just uh, use your, your boom pole to have a different perspective. I need to take one point for, from here. I'm going to cross the street so I can have a, a bigger picture of the church. Uh, I will take photographs from this distance, uh, but uh, I, I want to take photographs from afar so we can have a better uh, panorama of all the church. Just remember that safety is important.
Remember guys, safety is important. Always be aware of your context. Well, as you can see, I reached the point of um, start. But now I'm using the, the boom pole because I, I, I wasn't able to see the, the bottom of the church, which is uh, the, the position that we started with. Um, but uh, now that I reached the point, almost the point of the beginning, I'm going to start returning with the boom pole as it is now. So, but now I'm, I am going to cross the street. So my last photograph is going to be this one. I'm just going to use a little bit. And, um, and now we're gonna cross the, the street to have a, a different perspective uh, and using the boom pole. So let's see how it goes. I finished with the church, but now I'm going to show you quickly uh, a different technique. So this is the technique for uh, an outside of the building. There is another technique for inside of, the, of a building. Uh, there is another one which reproduces the way uh, you can create kind of a fo drone photography, which is basically just by walking with the boom pole in this position and taking photographs in transects but finally uh, if, uh, while we are returning to our house we are going to show you how can you map a street this is a different technique because basically you just need to walk along the street and taking photographs as you are walking so I'm gonna start walking from this position until a certain point in the street and instead of taking um, photographs manually I'm gonna program my uh, my camera so it can take photographs in intervals I'm gonna take a picture every say one or two seconds and then this is a different set of photos but since we are using also the church as a reference we might have the possibility to combine the two models but in, in this case, this is a different model, so you will, you will see the results.